Today is Sunday, October 12th, and this is News from the Front, episode 5. Hey everyone, welcome to News from the Front, episode 5. For those of us that got early cars back in the first six months after Model S was introduced, two of the biggest complaints, bizarrely, were the lack of grab handles up on the, the side above the windows and how small the visors were. Now, George Blankenship, who was the head of sales and service at the time, promised that at some point visors would be increased in size and magically, at the uh, D and Autopilot event the other night, Tesla also snuck in a few additional enhancements to the car, one of which was new, uh, larger visors. Whether those can be retrofitted onto existing cars, I don't know. But finally, the, uh, the wishes of all those early adopters have been satisfied, at least if you're prepared to get a new car. At the same time, Tesla also snuck in a few other enhancements to the car. Uh, they've increased the opening on the rear doors, I assume, by putting new hinges on. Um, on the D, for some reason only on the D, the charge port now both opens and closes electrically. Um, no idea why they made that change. Uh, there are links in the notes below to the release notes that went uh, on a blog post uh, that included a list of those other enhancements. As for autopilot, Elon didn't actually say when we would see it. Clearly it was demonstrated at the event and those release candidate cars were running a special version of the software that had that functionality in it. But when we will see that coming into production, uh, he didn't say. Likewise, when uh, new things like the blind spot monitoring, no idea when that's going to make its way into the production version of the software. Although I didn't go to the D event, last weekend I did get a chance to drive one of the cars that has the new sensors fit into it. It didn't have the dual motor but it is a production car that has the new sensors. The speed assist I quite liked. It reads the road signs and flashes a little warning and you can adjust what the car does uh, when that warning appears. And that I, th I think worked very well. The lane departure warning is a very subtle uh, vibration on the steering wheel. So, quite, so smooth you might hardly notice it. Um, it's really like if you hit a rumble strip or a very small rumble strip. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I've seen a few posts in the forum of people who have those new cars, uh, and they say it works quite well. So we look forward to getting those and the uh, extra features coming along in those new cars. Talking of new cars, uh, this, my Model S sat behind me, is one of the early cars that doesn't have all those new features. Uh, I would love to get the P85D, but I don't quite have the delta in the price available right now, so I'm going to live with this one for a while. Uh, and it's funny, a week ago I absolutely adored this car and thought it was fantastic. Last Thursday when they announced the P85D, suddenly this thing seems like uh, an ancient dinosaur, even though it's still one of the most amazing cars on the planet. So now that I've got over the hype a little bit, I'm uh, getting back to loving my, uh, my P85, and I think I'm going to wait until whatever the next iteration is before I make an upgrade. Unlike Mercedes, BMW, and the other luxury makes, Tesla doesn't have a certified pre-owned program, but that may be changing. Simon Spruill, who's the outgoing head of communications at Tesla, uh, he's on his way to Aston Martin confirmed to one of the trade magazines that Tesla has been looking at a certified pre-owned program and at some point will be introducing one. So those of you who are looking to trade up to the new D may have the opportunity to trade your Tesla back in to the company. In Gigafactory news, CEO of Panasonic Kazuhiro Suga confirmed that they will be investing several hundred million dollars in the Gigafactory in Nevada. One other thing about the Gigafactory that I haven't realized is that it's located in Sparks, Nevada, which I think is pretty appropriate. One of the viewers, George Hawley, asked me to do a little segment on closing the frunk. It seems a little bit strange to have to do a special 
uh, piece about something as simple as closing the hood on a car. Uh, but as you hopefully know, these uh, Model S cars are made of aluminum and aluminum is quite flexible compared to steel. And there have been reports about creases appearing in the hood when the hood isn't closed properly. So rather than me demonstrate it, Dan Megan at Tesla, who did the walkthroughs of everything about Model S, recorded a segment on how to close the front uh, hood properly. So I'm going to turn it over to him to do that now. To close, all you need to do is pull the hood down until it meets the latch, place a hand on either side of the logo here, and lean until it clicks. So as you can see, there's nothing magical about it. As long as you don't slam it or try and do anything crazy, you shouldn't get into any problems. Uh, I've heard rumors that Tesla have strengthened the, um, the part of the hood just near the latch um, to avoid some of the problems that a couple of owners have seen. Uh, but personally, two years in, I've had no problems with mine, and I hope you haven't either. Now a quick tip about the dialog buttons and the pop-ups. Um, if you press controls or a variety of other buttons, you'll get a, a pop-up on the screen, and each pop-up has a little X in the top corner. Um, but if you're driving, that can be a little bit fiddly to try and uh, get a hold of. Um, you can, of course, just press the controls button again, which will get rid of it. Um, but the other trick is to uh, is to touch anywhere outside of the dialog box, and that will um, just cause it to disappear. So if I bring up, let's so let's bring up charging. There we go. There's the charge display all charged up. Um, if I just tap anywhere outside the dialog box, boom, it vanishes. So you don't have to go hunting for that little X. Another quick tip, um, one way to tell a newer Model S from an older Model S, this is the, uh, the center console area with the 12 volt supply and the two USB ports. And you'll see in mine, this one's completely smooth. Uh, in the newer cars, they have a grill just here, which is where the cabin temperature sensor was moved to. The newer cars are a bit better at, uh, at judging the, the cabin temperature. The older cars have the sensor high up in the dash and it tends to read uh, make the car very confused about what temperature it is um, but the real reason I wanted to show this is uh, it's obviously we can um, plug USB cables in this is a, a black cable for my iPhone um, but uh, I got uh, one of these little adapters on the end of it um, the USB spec means that um, if you connect to a USB port that has both power and data it will limit the amount of current that it pushes into the device. Well, this little thing, link down in the uh, in the notes below, um, kills the data connection and it turns it into uh, just a uh, a power outlet. And so the the iPhone or anything that you plug into it will charge much faster. The uh, the other quick product review I'll do this week is um, is this thing. This is the silicone fob pocket from uh, Abstract Ocean. Uh, a guy called Pete White put these together. I first uh, came across Pete about a year ago when he first introduced the neoprene cover for the Tesla fob, um, which I quite liked, but he uh, he brought out the silicone version and uh, and I love it. It's uh, It protects the key, stops it getting scratched if you've got it in your pocket with other keys and uh, has a wonderful tactile feeling, comes in a variety of colours, uh, $9.99 and uh, worth every one I think. It's fantastic, love it. In supercharger news, we had three new superchargers open in the last week. They are Lafayette, Indiana, uh, Tours in France, Lagen in Sweden, and construction has started in Lauenau in Germany, uh, Inhevet and Bardu in Norway, Mayenfeldt and uh, Beckenried in Switzerland, and Missoula, Montana. In stock news, the market reacted quite badly to the D and autopilot announcement. In fact, incredibly badly. The stock was down 7.2% 
since last or since episode three of News from the Front. I think the analysts were hoping for news about Model 3. A lot of the future value of Tesla is based on the ramp up in revenues associated with the Model 3. And I think because there was no announcement of that, nor of Model X, some of the analysts decided to uh, punish the stock a little bit. That's it for episode 5. As always, links in the uh, doobly-doo down below. I would welcome your comments. If you've got any suggestions for stories you'd like me to cover, please drop me a line, and I will see you in the next episode. If you'd like to learn more about Tesla and their amazing car, my book, Owning Model S, The Definitive Guide to Buying and Owning the Tesla Model S, is available online. Link down below.